Scandinavia has dominated World's Strongest Man for the last 20 years, with four times champions John Paul Sigmundsson and Magnus Bev Magnusson from Iceland, Joko Ahala and Janne Virtanen from Finland, and Magnus Samuelsson from Sweden. 2001, Sven Carlsen became the first Norwegian champion. There was no uh, option for me losing at that point. I knew that if I didn't win the World's Strongest Man 2001, I would never win it, and that was not an option. In Sanya, Sven, now retired from competition, is acting as coach to Harold Haugen, the youngest competitor this year and Norway's most up-and-coming power athlete. The 19-year-old recalls his mentor's victory. I remember the first time I saw Sven on TV, I think it was in 2001, when he got a World's Strongest Man. And I was, I think I was like 15 years old. And I was running in the living room and said, Mama, I'm going to be that strong. He was a cocky young bastard. Came to my training facilities at the age of 16 on his moped. Saw me compete, you know. He was calling me all the time, asking for advice and so on. And, you know, I seen his progress and it was just unbelievable. And he has exactly the right attitude to make it all the way to the top in Strongman. But Harold is not the only Haugen in the house. His namesake, Odd, is the oldest competitor taking part in the qualification rounds this year. The 56-year-old, former Mr. Norway, has a wealth of experience when it comes to strength athletics. Uh, anything that had to do with strength, I loved it. Uh, so I, I really, all the way through my teens and into my tw early 20s, I competed in, in uh, you know, bodybuilding, uh, powerlifting, uh, Olympic weightlifting, and then coming to America and when I was about 20 years old I came to America. Then I uh, participated in uh, college wrestling, uh, American football, all kind of strength sp related sports as well. All this like a, a second dad to me and he's just a general very very great guy you know he helped me a lot, support me a lot and just amazing to see how he is able to fight with all these young guys at that age you know. He used to say that before when they asked him, how is it possible for you to be that strong at that age? And he used the reply with, just wait till Sven has finished puberty. <laughs> Surrounded by the very best strongmen in Sanya, Harold admits he's feeling the nerves, but acknowledges that Sven's support will be invaluable. I think maybe I will get a little bit stressed when I meet all the other guys, because they're so big and I, I'm new, you know? So it's very nice to have him around and uh, tell me what to do and not to do and all, all that. It may be his first appearance at World's Strongest Man, but his compatriots One can see the ago. potential that Arrow has in the sport that requires a wise, experienced head and strong, wide shoulders. Oh, in the tutelage of somebody like Sven, he could, uh, you know, he, he could make it. He could, uh, he could be a World's Strongest Man one day, I think. Uh, he definitely has the talent, he has the physical makeup and uh, seems to, from what I know, um, has the right mentality as well. He is a young kid and he has a lot of good years in front of him, so it doesn't really matter. He's only here for one purpose only, and that's to learn this year. So the baton has been handed to Aaron Haugen to carry Norwegian oh. hopes forward in strength oh. athletics. Yes! And under the guidance of a great past master of strongman, he could make his dream become a reality one day. Day three of competition. And while the set is being prepared, the athletes get ready for the events that lie ahead. Come in. Hey. Magnus Samuelsson is still fighting for points with an injured back. How would he cope with the first event of the day? The car walk. 400 kilograms of metal and a distance of 20 meters to carry it. A test of brute strength and endurance. It was the halfway stage of qualification and time for the more superior athletes to start making their mark. With their sights ultimately set on winning the coveted Strongman Trophy, the competitors hauled themselves as far as they possibly could down the course. challenge was indeed as tough as it looked. Few athletes made it across the finish line. Then it was the 
return of the master. The man they call the Dominator came close to carrying the vehicle the entire distance without stopping. Through Marius fashion, he was disappointed not to make it across the finish line in one go. But the defending champion completed the test in just over 26 seconds and set the pace for the remaining athletes to follow. Beat me now! That's not the pace, you know. I would consider that a bad time for a Norwegian. Not that bad. It wasn't a question of achieving a fast time for the injured Magnus Samuelsson. The weight of the car was simply too much. The pressure on his lower back was unbearable. It was time to call it a day. 20 seconds left, Magnus. One move. That's the problem. After the competition, the former champion admitted he knew his chances of making the final had been over for some time. Ten seconds. You finished? Yeah. Finished? Okay. Finished. Walking back from the first event, I, I knew it was over. Then I was trying, I was uh, hoping in, uh, that by trying to delay it day by day, there uh, could be uh, a chance for the swallowiness to calm down and for the nerves that are now jammed, that, that makes this leg pretty harmless, <laughs> to, to start to work again. But uh, as soon as I was almost there yesterday, but the first thing I have to do then is to pick up a 400 kilo car and then game over. <laughs> Standing two metres tall and weighing 150 kilos, Samuelsson holds the record for reaching the finals of World's Strongest Man nine times, a feat which he achieved over a 10-year span from 1995 to 2004. He was the champion in 1998. Yeah, I've been training lifting weights since ever since I was a kid and you have a maybe one goal in your head deep inside. It's, it's, it's kind of nice to, to reach the final destination. And then, even though I think that I've done better contests and I've been in better shape after that, but it's always nice to have it done. At the age of 37, is it time to listen to his body and take the advice of another former champion who has recently retired from competitive strength athletics? Yeah, that would be the smart move, wouldn't it? You know, but Magnus still thinks he has one good year in him. Well, I hope he's right. I hope he proves me wrong, but you know, I, sh I think he should join me in my retirement. <laughs> Don't be angry with me, Magnus, for saying that. It's been an emotional journey in Sanya 2006 for Magnus Samuelsson. There were highs, but more lows. Have we seen the last of him in Strongman? Of the preparing as I have for, for a few months and uh, done all the homework, trained, and I came here in probably the best shape I've ever been in. Of course, I'm really frustrated that one injury stops the whole campaign. And I was in my head 100% sure I would reach final, and I still know I would have. And I uh, was looking forward for the final. Actually, I didn't even bother to train the events in the qualifier. I've only been training in the final events. Just have to face the fact that this time something went wrong in, in the back, and it was too severe to be able to fix it. It's over for this time and we will see. I haven't really made up my mind. It's either the last show I make, but on the other hand, I don't really want to quit like, quit like this. I was uh, more thinking about winning or at least be top three in the last show I make, which means I have to train for one more year. Sanya, it's business as usual.
Due to the mild climate and favorable environment, Hainan is regarded by the Chinese as a long life island. Their diet generally consists of locally grown fresh produce with little Western influence upon it. Would the menu on offer be enough to satisfy the strongman's enormous appetites? When I was the world's strongest man, I ate five pounds of beef for breakfast, 10 pounds of vegetables, and I drank a gallon of beer, or two, and that was breakfast. When you're lifting and carrying cars and anvils on a regular basis, you need to build up muscles and keep energy reserves high. 25 strong men eating breakfast, that's a lot of steak and eggs, or is it? Over to Britain's Terry Hollands. A litre, two litres of porridge, sometimes eight wheat of in one sitting. Protein shake as well, first thing. Plenty of eggs, always eating eggs. Yeah, I do eat quite a few eggs. I mean, it's, it's quite a lot of eating. Breakfast is usually consists of some oatmeal with some fruit and milk, and then maybe seven to 12 eggs. The eggs are probably the best food source of protein. I have like seven Weetabix every morning with milk. I, I try and consume at least 6,000 calories a day, you know, but I doesn't go up with a full tummy. I can't stand a full tummy. Some of these guys can just, it's unreal what they eat, and I almost have to like, oh, it's been two hours, I, I need to eat something. I think steak and eggs is probably built more muscle than any other foods. Uh, if you throw milk in there, I'd say for sure. Uh, you can't go wrong with food. Retired former champion Sven Carlson is no longer in regular training. So he's put on a few pounds of fat rather than muscle. It's very hard to lose weight and go down again when I spent most of my grown-up life trying to gain as much as possible. And now I find it a hard time to lose it. It's very funny actually. But I can do it. I can do it. The Yalong Bay Golf Club provided the venue for the overhead stone lift, the penultimate event of the qualification for the final of World Strongest Man 2006. It was the fourth and final day of qualification, a day that would decide who would be remaining in China for the final and who would be travelling home. As the crew tirelessly set the stage ready for the athletes to take their positions, the strong men prepared to lift four colossal granite stones each weighing over 100 kilos. The heat and the event were brutal. As well as haul the great stones above their heads, the strong men had to lock out their arms in order to satisfy the referee. A challenge that thoroughly tested the increasingly tired bodies of the strongest men on the planet. Go left. Go left. Go left. That was rolling backwards. Hug. <laughs> The defending champion dramatically failed to lift the final stone. Go lift! Go. Finish! But Iceland's Boris Haraldsson put on the most impressive performance of the day, lifting all four pieces in just under 70 seconds. Go lift! That's how you do it, people! As the Granite Warriors looked on, the final event of qualification was looming. Barrel loading. Three 100 kilogram kegs that required shifting from one platform to another. And if that wasn't challenging enough, the strong men had to haul them and their massive bodies through water, making the trial that much tougher, much to the intrigue of the locals. Coming into the event, Terry Hollands was one point ahead of Jesse Marundi. The other three competitors in their group had already completed the challenge, with Ravis Vidzis from Latvia posting an impressive time, just over 70 seconds. But Marundi was favourite over Hollands, and a quicker time will guarantee qualification. Ready? 
After the frustration of missing out on a place in the final by one point in 2005, Hollands needed to find something really special to prevent disappointment once more. In 2006, not only had the man from Dartford beaten the American in the final challenge, but he'd also won their group, with the top two qualifying for the final. And there was one final twist. Ravis Vidzis had been the quickest in the group, and his outstanding effort had forced the American out of the competition, and there was no stopping the emotion of qualifying for his first World Strongest Man final. He had scored one point more than Jesse Marundi, who had worked so hard for 12 months to achieve his ultimate goal, but failed. He has wonderful levers and great athleticism and a real strong power of mind over his body. But when you're so tall, he maybe lacks a little bit of body weight in that if he was able to gain 20 or 30 pounds, he would be a totally different strongman. For Jesse Marundi, it's just a little more time back at the drawing board and a little more weight and heavy resistance training that will prepare him to get back onto the world stage. Terry Hollands had achieved his ambition. He'd reached the final of World's Strongest Man and beaten the big American. Pretty surprised he didn't make it through. Um, I think coming into it, Jesse probably would have been the favorite for the group and perhaps me being second. But um, I mean, I, I knew Jesse wouldn't have it all his own way. I mean, you know, I knew it was gonna be tight, but I mean, still a bit surprised, I think. And now that the competition was over, it was time for a celebratory cigarette. Yes, Big Tell is a smoker, but he is trying to give up. He's the man they call the Dominator. He's the most revered strongman on the planet. A three-time World Strongest Man champion, Poland's Marius Budzinowski. Marios is the consummate strongman, uh, probably one of the all-time greatest. As a strongman, he is the best in history. Unbelievable, nobody can beat him. Marius is undoubtedly the greatest strongman that's ever lived. The former gym instructor made his strongman debut seven years ago at the age of 22. He made an immediate impact. First time compete in World Strongest Man 2000 in Sun City. First time compete, and uh, I go to final. Also, I am, uh, I I have uh, four uh, four plays, one point to to tier. It's very very close. From Davidson, the world's strongest man. See, he's the perfect package. I mean, he's he's just the right height. He carries just the right amount of body weight. Uh, his grip is fantastic. He can he can squat and deadlift with the heaviest, biggest power lifters. Uh, he can, he can run and carry as well as any of the most athletic competitors. And, uh, you know, his endurance is unmatched. And, you know, combining all that, you, you create the perfect machine. He probably spends 24 hours a day, or just a touch less, concentrating on being the strongest man in the world. I haven't seen it, but I know that he trains. I've, I've been told he trains as much as six or eight hours a day. <laughs> When I trained, I thought two or three hours, once or twice a day, was enough. Obviously, Marios has taken it to the next level, where he has gotten his system tweaked to the point where he can lift and lift and jump and run and carry and throw and do a battery of events better than anybody. Unlike some strongmen, Marius retains a very low body fat percentage, which helps him with his speed and endurance. He has Unbelievable good shape all the all the time. Good body like a bodybuilder. He never shine. He never say like, oh, I can do this. He every time say, yes, I can do this. If somebody do do this, I do this. I can do this better. With success has come fame and fortune. In his homeland, he's a national hero. He is. Uh 
practically revered in uh, Poland. I've been been there walking the streets with him, people practically bowing to him and 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 you talking about even people like kids with funny color hair and earrings and tattoos and looking like they wouldn't have any reverence for anybody but you know oh oh Marius Marius Now age 29, standing 1 meter 86 tall and weighing in at 132 kilos, Marius Pudzianowski is only one victory away from equaling the record currently held by John Paul Sigmundsson and Magnus Ver Magnussen, four World Strongest Man titles. In 2006, an impressive three wins out of six events has seen him qualify comfortably for his sixth final. Can the master be defeated? To beat Marius, someone would have to have uh, a perfect performance, a flawless performance, and he would have to stumble somewhere along the way. Because I, I really believe that if Marius puts together a perfect performance, which he does 100% of the time, uh, he's unbeatable. In this kind of competition, I don't see anybody beating him right now. But still, you know, he has his weak points. When it comes to very heavy Don't stuff, uh, he, he has his weakness. You know, he's, he's a very dynamic, strong man. He moves very fast or unbelievable strong. But you know, when it comes to the real brute strength of just lifting very heavy stuff and move them for a very short period of time, there is even a lot of guys in the world that can actually beat him. Well, these are the strong men he'll be facing in the final. Will it be title number four for the Dominator? Marius is, a, I mean, he is something very special, but again, he's still only human and, um, you know, he's, he still makes mistakes every now and then. Leading the challenge from the United States will be the experienced Phil Fister. I've beaten Morris more than once. Um, I, I beat him earlier this year, actually, at a contest. He was two spots behind me overall. And he's just a regular guy, you know. He's just like any of us. He's human. As the finalists prepare, the champion is ready. This year, maybe win. This is, this is four times for the strongest man. Uh, I want five times. This is, uh, is five times is very close because this year maybe, maybe win. It's, uh, this is uh, uh, every athlete who uh, won't win this year. Maybe I first. Polska Guro. So will Marius make it title number four or will we have a brand new champion? Join us next time for the ultimate test of strength power and endurance, the final of World's Strongest Man 2006. Good lift. Good lift. Good lift.